So today I'm going to show you how to make a uh, storage box, a bit like this one. Uh, I won't do all the trim and the fancy detail, it'll just be a, a square box just to make things easy, just to show you how, how this is done. Okay, these are really useful. I've got loads of them and the beauty of them being all in, all flexible is that you can squeeze something in on a shelf where you can't with something solid. So I'm going to show you how to do that or something similar. So I've cut my squares into nine and a half inches so my box is going to be a nine inch box which is what I'm after. You might want a six inch box, it's up to you. Okay so you're going to need four pieces for the main for the sides you don't need to have a posh one for the bottom because nobody's going to see it and I usually do the inside the same so it's four pieces of main fabric nine inch nine and a half inch square this is and then I've chosen shorn the sheep for the outside and wonky lines for the inside and you'll need six of the, the lining ones so four of those and six of those and then what you'll also need is some Boselin R4 and it's fusible and you just iron it on I've gone ahead and ironed it on so you need four pieces to go on the four main side bits and that's what it looks like when it's when it's ironed on it's absolutely brilliant stuff this is I sell it in the shop I sell it online you can get it double fusible as well we sell that as well but I, I like this I like the thickness and the softness okay so all you do is is iron it on so all my four pieces of main fabrics have got the iron on bosel on the back and then one of them is with the wonky lines has got the bosel because that's going to be the base okay so it's a really simple process all you've got to do is get these in a line right sides together and a quarter of inch seam sew down that line and then get your next one and attach that to there and then get your next one and attach that to there so you're gonna have a big long strip in a line and then I'll go and do that and then you're going to do the same with the lining pieces so they need to go in a line as well and then I'll show you the next stage I'll go and do that and come back okay so I've put all my four pieces together in a big long line so what I need to do now is attach the base and my base is going to be the wonky lines so go to say this one the second one up or this one it doesn't really matter and lie it face down so it's square with the fabric and sew along that line it's a quarter of an inch seam allowance on on everything so just sew along that line and when you've done that one leave a quarter of an inch either side of where you're stitching from there to there so that when you come to this side you can attach it like that and do that one and then go to this side and attach that one and that one so on and so on until you're left with the final one and do that one and then you'll have your box okay so I've gone ahead and done that with the lining I'll do that with this one now but I'll just show you the the lining one what I mean So I've done that, I've left a quarter of an inch there so that when I swing that one across to do that it just sits up nicely and matches and then all I've got to do is that. Now when you come to your final side, unlike the main, when you come to that last side you've got to leave about, well quite a bit if you're using bosel because it's quite stiff. So you probably leave 
but four inches gap. Make sure that you backstitch on both openings, both ends of the opening, uh, so that you can pull it through and it's not going to rip. Okay, so I'll go and do this one now and finish this one and come back. Okay, so I've done that. That's the box now taking shape and I've done the lining as well and left enough to pull through on one of the sides. So now leaving that that way round, the wrong way round, and turning your lining box the right way round, just push out all them corners. So place it inside that one and match up your corners. Okay, so get that corner to that corner. And pop a pin in or a clip. It'd probably be easier with clips that corner to that corner, push it down, make sure it's sitting nice, on there, and that one, When you've got it all ready, stitch all the way around the outside. Okay, make sure it's all level, like I say, and the, and the corners are all pushed in. If you've got, you know, if it's a little bit big up here, you can afford to come up a little bit just to make sure it's straight, but just push all them corners in like that. Okay, so stitch all around there and then I'll come back. Right, I have gone and way and done that but now I'm just pulling everything through that little hole in the side that we left in the lining. Uh, I just started this so that I wasn't wasting video time. So just with your hand still in the hole while there is still a hole this is where you start to poke everything out. Like so, get all the corners. I mean, it bows all is fabulous stuff. It's very needle friend friendly. You just have to probably put it on a larger stitch than you would normally stitch just the fabric. So I tend to just put it on a three or a three and a half. So now all I've got to do is sew that up that hole that we left down the side so I'll stitch that on the machine and then push these in and we're very nearly there look so now you need to just roll up your seams like like so and just pop a peg in all the way around and and just top stitch there just so it's you know it's not loose and baggy And at the same time you do that, if you just grab the bottom like that and just do from about a quarter of an inch seam across here and then do the same there, it'll make it nice and square to sit. It just gives it a bit more form and you can also do it up the sides as well if you want it sort of more square. And then uh, and then I'll, I'll go ahead and do that and then show you what's next. Okay, so I've done that. My I had enough fabric without robbing too much of the inside to leave a little lip all the way around the, the top edge and I've gone ahead and done all the way around the base so it gives it a square bottom. But I'm not going to bother with the sides but like I said before you can if you want to you can stitch up the sides and make it a bit more of a rigid square keep 
but I'm not going to bother. But what I will probably do is just fold that over. I quite like it when it's got a fold over. sure it's all level and the, this is bosal is very flexible so you can manipulate it any way you like and there you go it's all done all I've got to do now is fill it up and that won't take much do it I've got so much stuff to put in and I, I actually purposely made it this size for some stuff I've got to put in but like I say you can do it any size you like I've I've, I do all sizes but this one is now a nine inch it started off as a nine and a half inch that's now a nine and nine inch square cube and how beautiful to put that on your shelf I uh, hope you enjoy making it and uh, I'll speak to you soon <laughs>